joined by Phil Bennett. He has been playing golf. I'm not. We didn't interrupt your round, did we? No, we finished. I actually finished with a natural birdie, our last birdie on our last hole. And I'm riding with a friend of mine, Steve Vaughn, who can validate that. Uh, put put it on speaker so he can validate it then. Okay, say it, Steve. Yeah, no, natural birdie. Okay, all right. And this was the was this the Dan Pastorini tournament? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was for angels for kids with uh, uh, physical issues. Uh, Dan does a wonderful job. He's done it for 17 years. Uh, wheelchairs, all the things that kids with disabilities need. Uh, it's a great call. Phil, you never know. That's why they play the games. But in your opinion, after what you saw Texas do to Oklahoma, they have Georgia this week. We know who Georgia is, but they don't seem to be quite right right now. Um, What's it going to take to beat Texas? You know, one of the things I I thought when when I watched Texas and OU, obviously right now OU doesn't have any juice. They have no star player. They're struggling at quarterback. Uh, they're good, not great on defense, uh, but offensively, they're poor in the O line, poor receiver, uh, poor running back, poor quarterback. Uh, I think that Texas has some vulnerabilities on defense that haven't been challenged. I think uh, Georgia is good enough throwing the ball to give them some problems that they haven't seen in, in the games they played to this point. You know, Michigan could not throw the ball. And, and, and the, even though it was a great win, I, I told people, I said, Michigan might be 6-6 six and six this year. Uh, Georgia's capable of beating them. Uh, I think Texas is better, but, but Georgia can, can defend them better than anybody they play. Coach, Oklahoma, I, I'm an OU fan, go way back, and uh, I haven't seen the fan base this flustered in, in quite a long time. Uh your thoughts on what you see? Obviously, the offense is, is an absolute mess uh, on that side well, of the ball. But uh, what, what do you think about what you see from the Sooners? Well, I, I'm telling you, Seth Luttrell is a great coach. He is, he is dealing with a situation of not having a quarterback, very average or below average offensive line, no explosive receivers, no explosive running back. That's a bad combination. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm just telling you, that, that right now, with Dylan Gabriel gone, their best receivers hurt, uh, they're going to they're gonna be a target for a lot of people. Coach, this was the craziest weekend as far as close games that I've, I've seen in a long time and we've all seen in a long time. I'll start – the first one I want to ask you about is Ohio State and Oregon. Uh, Will Howard made a really – uh, you know, bad decision right at the end of that game. But I think that takes away from Dylan Gabriel is just a gamer. What is it like to have a quarterback like that, that when the moment is big, he meets it almost every time? You know, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but my son was a uh, coach at Hawaii. And Dylan is from Hawaii. And I went over there one time and I watched him. Dylan's only about five foot ten, But he is, a, as you said, he's a little baller. And everywhere he's gone, you know, he's with Jeff Levy and, and Heifel at UCF. Then it's, a, uh, you know, with him to, to Oklahoma. I mean, he is a baller. And, and he's at his, I think, maybe his sixth year. He's knowledgeable, uh, knows where to distribute it, uh, doesn't waste and, and he has players around him. That Evan Stewart from A&M uh, really showed what he was about. Uh, you know, and I want to say something. Will Howard's a really good player, but this is the second time he's done that. You know, I don't know if you remember this, but back when he was at Kansas State a year ago, they played at Texas. He let the clock run out, made a bad decision in that game also. Uh, that doesn't mean I, I thought that Ryan Day put him in a bad situation. Uh, they could have kicked the field goal. It should have been a speed out, something the ball with five or six seconds that they could get a play with one second. And I, I felt like that was a coaching error also. You know, uh, a lot was going on in that game. O- Oregon, Ohio State was a classic. Uh, and then obviously the Texas route of Oklahoma too. What was your thoughts? Um, so, so 
with Dion and Colorado. They're playing better. They were beaten at home by K-State. Avery Johnson threw the ball when they needed him to do it. But they might not have Hunter. I don't know. There's no official update on that. They might not have Jimmy Horn. They have plenty of receivers. But they had minus 29 yards rushing, Phil, in that game against K-State. It's going to be hard to win with that. You know, as good as good as Sedora is, the receivers are good. Uh, I think they're really playing nice football on offense. But if you can't rush the football, the game changes on you. And, and there's, you know, I look at the Big 12, and what a, what an exciting everybody, you know, in the point spread within two, three, four points gained. Um, it, it's got a chance to be an unbelievable finish. And I, I'm not sure Colorado, two things. I don't think they can play defense at that level. And I, if they can't rush the ball, they can't help their defense. So I think that takes them out of it. Coach, did you ever cross paths really with Kalani Sataki, BYU's head coach at all over the years? I did. You know, I knew him way back when he was a player. Uh, you know, he is a, he's a sharp guy. I did a clinic one time in Salt Lake City, and he was on the staff. He wasn't the head coach. Uh, very impressive young guy. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but Jeff Grimes worked for him. Jeff Grimes oh, yeah. was a GA for me at, at, at A&M, and he worked for him at BYU and just absolutely loved him. Everybody seems to. I, I yeah. mean, like he. I mean, we have him on all the time. He's 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 just got that, and and he's got his team believing that not only can they win, but they can pummel people, and that's what they're doing, Coach. I will tell you this: they're physical. Uh, they remind me of a of a earlier Utah team. I mean, they're not they're not explosive in a lot of different areas, but but. The bottom line is they 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 keep hammering you into submission, and, and you end up you look up and you say, "Damn, we're down twenty points," and, and you can't get back in the game. Yeah, they've been a surprise. Arizona State, you had a time there before they made the change, and now they've made another one. Of course, with what Kenny Dillingham's doing his second year, they've got a running back that, that I've said this before that you would love to have if you got into a fight in the back alley in Scadaboo. Um, man, they're, you, you know, who he reminds me of, he reminds me of Jock Linwood. Okay. I, I mean, he is fast, hard to bring down, can catch the ball. Um, he, he can do it all. And I'm telling you now, the thing that, that they're doing is Brian Moore, their defensive coordinator is a young guy that I've sort of mentored over the years. He has got them doing the thing they need to do. They're keeping the ball in front of them. They're not giving up explosive plays, and they're getting a ton of takeaway. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously that atmosphere out there, I don't know if you watched any of it, but but they're, they're liking what Kenny's doing there in Tempe. Well, at the same time, and that's a fan base that can get bored pretty quickly, but that's a huge school. How electric is it what he's doing there then to, to get them all locked in? Well, I'm telling you, I, I mean, if you watch, the end zone, the south end zone was rocking. And, and I can, I'm telling you, two or three times, Utah had third, short, third, medium, that they ended up rising, got frustrated, and they ended up taking uh, penalties on delay of game. Coach, uh, speaking of, of tough atmospheres, Baylor heading to Lubbock this week. I know you had some of the neutral site stuff uh, in, in that series between Baylor and Texas Tech, but just over the course of your career, how many trips to Lubbock did you ever make? And, and if so, uh, how did that experience kind of stack up stack up amongst the, the rowdiest or, or toughest places to play? They love their football in Lubbock. You know, people used to say, hell, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. But but I opened, I think I told you, on Labor Day, I went and watched the the Texas Tech Abilene Christian game. That's right. You know, great atmosphere. They finished the end zone complex. Joey has done a really good job. Has a great staff. You know, got a lot of Baylor guys there. You know, he's got uh, uh, all his feet, all his ties. They have done have really come back from losing to Washington State. Uh, I think they're a team right now that could be in the mix for this championship. I think that uh, 
you know, this, they know they're coming off an open day, and they know Baylor is a capable team. So uh, I think this will be one of the better games this weekend. You mentioned how um, teams play, and that uh, obviously uh, some teams, when they play you like BYU, they, you you come out of that game, you need an ice bath for the rest of the weekend. How That's about right. what going on at Iowa State? Matt Campbell's had a couple of teams that have been really good, and then about the time you think, then they slip back. They have three different type running backs. They have a guy that hurts you when he runs in Jordan, but what they're doing right now going into Morgantown and winning that game methodically. David, I thought that 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 two weeks ago, I watched, I watched them twice. I watched all of their Iowa games, and I was very impressed. I mean, it was two physical teams, and, and I would say truly out physical to win the game. And then I watched the Baylor I would say game. Baylor played really well the first half, and you saw it as well as I did. I would say just came in. They took it over the second half. I mean, they just they just grinded the game out. And last week, you know that they, they they played the team, and we all know playing at West Virginia is hard. Uh, I I think they're the real deal. I, I like their quarterback. They they've got three backs. They reminded me of when we had shot. Uh, and Glasgow and, and uh, Sistrum, all those guys we had. I mean, they're they're three headed monsters running the ball. So, does Georgia look good to you? You know, I I, I think they're deceptively good. I, I I don't think they're running the ball as well as they did with Munkin. I just don't think. But I, I'm telling you now, the kid threw for almost 400 yards. Uh, I think. Defensively, I think Jeff Levy last week with a freshman quarterback did a really good job against them. I, I tell you, going into this game with Texas, I think Ewers is a good player. I'm not willing to get on the table and say he's an All-American. I'm just not. I don't know why, but I, but I'm not. Uh, Kirby's a guy, you know, he's listening to all this deal about, hey, you can't stop him, you, you know. I think this game is going to be a lot tighter than people believe it is. Uh, I don't think that Texas will, will overpower them like they did Oklahoma, and I think that I think they're capable of beating them. I do, but I think Georgia will put up a hell of a fight. Phil Bennett with us on 365 Sports on Mondays, driving back after playing in the Dan Pastorini Charitable Golf Tournament on his way back to College Station. Phil, did you see how Georgia Tech and North Carolina ended? I did. Oh, my it's, God. Is that – look, <laughs> you, you're you a defensive coordinator. Uh, so, I know that had to hit you in a certain spot where Georgia Tech was clearly playing for overtime uh, and just ran a zone read and, and scored a 68-yard touchdown. You, you know, Craig, I've watched North Carolina – of course, Randy's there. Randy Clemens. I mean, they're, they're they're poorly coached and they're poor on defense. I mean, I've watched them. I would like to make an excuse, but I can't. I've watched them against James Madison. Uh, I saw them against Duke. Uh, just that they're, they and you're, what you're saying is exactly right. They had no intention to risk turning the ball over, and the Haynes kid took the ball on a on his own dive and was un. Uh, the thing that bothered me the most, and, and you saw it as well as I did, he was untouched. I mean, never contact on his own dive. And, and they're just not they, – they haven't played very well uh, at all defensively. Phil, I want to take you outside of the college realm for a second. The Cowboys yesterday in Arlington, and we don't talk about the NFL much, but we have a couple of Cowboys analysts later in the week. They were obliterated by Detroit. And, I mean, Detroit was laughing at him and even tried to run it up with a couple of trick plays because of last year's game where the two-point conversion was overruled. But my question for you is, did, did you watch the game and did you see anybody quitting? You know, I, I'm very close to Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn. Uh, Aaron Glenn, and you know, I signed Aaron Glenn to Purdue and he couldn't get in school, went to, went to Navarro and then went to A&M. 
and Dan was there when I played. I love both of them. It was obvious to me, Smokey, that there was two different men- mentalities on the field. Dan doesn't let – I mean, Dan's guys are in the prove-it mode. The Cowboys are in, you know, a groove-it mode, whatever you want. That, that, they seem to, hey, like it's going to happen automatically. Uh, they were by far the superior team in physicality and in, in, in being prepared making decisions, uh, you know, let's be honest. And if you, I watched enough of it to see the Cowboys didn't want to tackle anybody. Mm. I know they're missing some players, but, but they could not tackle Montgomery, could not tackle the back. Uh, the quarterback was, was, uh, was never challenged. Uh, it was a dominant. I, I don't know if I can remember when the Cowboys have been more dominated than that game. About a month ago, but still, uh, <laughs> no, I, but Phil, I, 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 uh, I, I did. Uh, here's one thing I loved about Dan Campbell's game plan. They got they lost the game because they tried to run a little sneaky play and didn't report the numbers right last year on a tackle eligible. Well, they ran like ten different tackle eligible plays this year for spite. Yep, they did. Yep, they did. You, you know, I want to tell you, Dan is. Uh, Dan sets the tempo. You know, you ask every one of those kids that plays for him. You know, the other thing that, that people don't realize, they lost their best defensive player in that game. Mm-hmm. So so I, I think it am this Hutchinson kid is the heart and soul of their defense, and, and I think they wanted to win even more so after he got injured before halftime. There's a question in the chat room, and I know you got to go. Appreciate you doing this on the way back from playing golf. Um, question for Phil. What will it take for K-State to have an LM defense again? Is that is that something that I don't know much of what that is? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, Lynch, Lynch mob. Lynch mob. Lynch mob. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, and, and it's a, you know, football is different today, number one. I mean, they have moved the rules to the point that it's an offensive game. And I don't know if you're going to see a defense can do some of the things that we were able to do uh, when I was at K-State, when Bob Stoops was at K-State. You know, I, I, I'm not sure, Bobby Elliott, I'm not sure that you'll see that again. But I, I think that, that uh, you know, with the tempo and all the offenses, uh, I think they're good on defense. I, I just don't know if there's ever going to be a, a defense that you just sit there and say, hey, this is a closed-out defense because I don't. I'm not sure the rules will allow it. I mean, they make it an offensive game. Hey, uh, did you have any other birdies, or did you guys? Because these 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 charity tournaments, there's some people with these teams that are set up. Oh, like oh, they, they shoot 28 under par, some ridiculous number. <laughs> hey, they were stacked up. We I think we finished see 11 under, and, and it was a lot of fun. And I was playing with much better golfers than me. But but I don't know if you remember Bubba Bean. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Bubba Bean was a running back for us at A&M. Yep. First round pick. Bubba, Steve Vaughn, Mark Dennard, you know, all conference, all American center. It was sort of an Aggie group. We had a really good time. And um, But I'll tell you this. We probably were the – if you ask the, the card girls, we were the hot <laughs> – we were the hot team on the card girls. Uh, Bubba Bean, the first thing I thought about was not A&M. The first thing I thought about was Kirbyville, Texas. That's oh, what, Kirbyville. That's yep. where he's from. That's where he's from. Yep. I'll tell you what. He's, he's a, he's, he was a great football player, great teammate. And, you know, I'd be remorse if I didn't say this uh, today on the radio. We're all sad. Uh, one of our best players I ever played with, George Woodard, woo-woo Woodard, oh. passed away uh, over the weekend. Uh, at 69 years old in Dallas, and um, we're, we're, we're all Aggies are extremely sad about George. He was a wonderful person and just a kind soul, but one of the baddest running backs you've ever seen. He was a dude. He was a dude. He was a dude. Yeah, he was. I, I used to tell him in practice, I said, I'd rather take a beating than to have to scream at you. Oh. Yeah, uh, he was a he was the start of a little bit of a run where you had those two hundred and fifty to two hundred and eighty pound 
running yeah. backs, right? Craig Ironhead Hayward yeah. is no longer with us and a couple other guys, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And just uh, the thing about him, he was from Van Black, Texas, mm-hmm. and just and just just a super, super good guy. I mean, I used to watch him deal with, with walk-ons and different – he was kind to everybody. You'd have never known he was a, a player. He was that kind of guy. Phil, thank you. In, uh, be careful on the way home. Thanks for your time. Glad you had a chance to enjoy golf. We'll talk to you again. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk thank to you. Bye-bye. Phil Bennett on many things, a lot of the different games.